Hello and welcome to my review of Scream 2022. It's the fifth Scream film. I haven't seen Scream 1 to 4, but I watched the newest one last night at the cinema. And there are some good things about it, and in my opinion, a few things that irritated me a little bit and I believe detracted from the film overall. So let's talk about the positives first because it's important to be positive, I think, especially in this epoch. But, or rather so, um, Melissa Barrera is the lead in this. I've never heard of her before, but I think she turns in a good performance. She has to show a variety of different emotions throughout the film. I say a variety, it's mainly scared, shocked, defiant, heroic, powerful. So no, there is a plethora, I suppose, but she does a good job. Her love interest, however, an actor by the name of Jack Quaid, I believe that's how you pronounce his name, I thought was a little bit hammy, a little bit cringy is the best way I can describe him. He's certainly playing a stock archetypal character, you know, the, the stoic boyfriend, but I didn't really buy their chemistry, him and uh, Melissa Barreras. And when they were on screen together, which is quite a bit, she always comes across as the more accomplished of the two, in my opinion. Mikey Madison is in this. She's, that's a girl or a female actress. Um, and I didn't recognise her from this, but my friend who I saw the film with told me that she's in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And I have seen that. And now he said that to me, I can, I'm pretty sure I can remember her from that. But she's in it. The cast from the old films or the original films are in it. Neve Campbell, David Arquette, Courtney Cox. They all put in good performances. There's other actors involved. Um, Jenna Ortega, if you've seen the trailer, it's her that you've seen. The, um, the girl that answers the phone, that's right at the start of the film. So I won't go into detail about the trailer, but that's one thing I appreciated. Of course, there are sections of the film that are in the trailer that aren't just at the beginning, but the trailer primarily focuses on the opening scene, essentially. And that actress, Jenna Ortega, again, I think puts in a really good performance. She has to do a lot of screaming. You see that in the trailer and it, it's always believable. So she's definitely a bonus or a positive of the film. And another thing to say about this film is it's an 18, or at least it is in England. And I can't remember the last time I saw an 18 at the cinema, if ever, to be honest. There's no nudity in it. There's no gratuitous bad language. It's an 18 purely because there's a lot of violence in it. It really is a slasher film. And that's another positive I believe one can take away from watching the film and that is the practical effects the blood squibs the prosthetics they must use it really is a, a slasher film in every sense of the genre and that's done well and brings me on to my criticisms now of the film so <clears throat> The biggest thing I would take away from this, and I spoke to one of my brothers earlier, and he assured me that the original's a bit like this anyway, which I didn't know because I hadn't seen it. But I'm really over Hollywood writing their films in such a way that they're so meta. If you saw my review on Matrix 4, you would have known or you will know that that was a big criticism i had of that film that is so self-referential and i find it tiresome to be honest i mean there were moments in this film where it is clever 
but it beats you over the head with it. Let me just give you an example without spoiling anything. At the start of the film, there's a dialogue between some characters about the, uh, the state of horror, the horror genre. And one of the characters is calling out and describing modern contemporary horror films such as The Babadook and The Witch and a few others and saying how it's elevated horror, it's not just slasher and it's a higher art form than some of the more gory slasher type films. And this other person saying, no, I prefer the violent stab em up films. And it's like, oh, okay, I get what you're doing here because that's what this film is. Um, but there's one moment where one character monologues for about three minutes and talks about soft requels, reboot sequels. And she's talking about the newest Star Wars film and other films that are and ghostbusters the newest ghostbusters where it's basically the original film but they bring the old cast back to service the fans and it's like i know as an audience member that's what you're doing okay i'm aware that i'm in a cinema watching this film you know you don't need to keep telling me that i like many people i should imagine watch films for escapism and it's hard to really escape the vicissitudes of life or the reality in which one finds themselves in when they're watching a film at the cinema when the film you're watching constantly says you know this is basically the original but we're doing this and these are the rules of how you do this and it's like bro i just play the film out and when it's central to the film like it is in scream and it and it was central in Matrix 4, it just gets irritating, for me at least anyway. And I thought that was a bit of a negative and the film sort of hinges on that. So that sort of ruined it partially for me. I spoke to my mate when we got out and he thought it was a little bit boring, so that's not a great review either. But um, yeah, if you like the horror genre, if you like blood and knives and uh, women uh, in horror films and this is a, it's an okay film but for me I found it a little bit irritating it's directed by Matt Bertinelli Olpin and Tyler Gillett Gillet I'm not sure how you pronounce his name. They seem to be a double act. I've never heard of them before, but they've done a few horror films together. So I don't know if they're brothers or cousins or just good pals that make films together. But yeah, it was um, it was okay. But this sort of Deadpool, we're talking to the audience. I'm over. I'm massively over. But um, that's just me. If you like that sort of thing or you find yourself thinking, oh, it's clever how they've done that, then this is the film for you. If you're a big Scream fan, this is the film for you. Um, if you want to see some decent performances by actors uh, that you've not probably heard of before and you want to see Courtney Cox and David Arquette and Neve Campbell put in a good shift, then go check it out. But yeah, not the best, not the worst. Cheers.